In this video, I want to talk about the third season of The Witcher Netflix show while it's still somewhat relevant. I wish I could do some sort of deeper analysis or review, but I need more time to let it sink in and think about it for a while before I can come up with anything profound. And we are also going to Poland for several days this week with Nazair Brigade to the Witcher LARP called Jesse Bogarde, so I didn't have much time for this and it's essentially just my first impressions put together quickly. So let's get into it. Oh, and there will be spoilers for the whole third season, of course. I hate what Netflix did with the fight at the beginning of the first episode, where Geralt kills the professor and his crew. First of all, Professor is just a nickname and he's supposed to be a murderer for hire, who just uses academic language, which is pretty unusual for his profession, hence the nickname. He's not supposed to be an actual scholar. And second, they completely changed the context around this scene and spent something like a minute and a half on it. I wouldn't have such a problem with it if it would be just some minor unimportant fight, but this is one of Geralt's best fights in the series and they completely wasted it only as a short hook at the beginning of the episode. If it would be adapted properly it would be more like something from Tarantino movies with slow and gradual building of tension and then a very bloody ending. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised after they've completely wasted the fight with Michelet brothers in the second season, which might be the coolest fight in the books and and Netflix turned it into such a lame scene. There are several things I liked this season though. First are some locations which finally look a bit like Central Europe, because a lot of this season was shot in Slovenia and you can tell. The second is the soundtrack, because Netflix worked with Percival on it, and you can immediately hear the difference when they use more folk instruments like Rebek and Baglamalut. The last thing I liked were the dryads, because they finally look like forest creatures, and the brown skin evokes earth or tree colors, so that's cool. I would still appreciate more variety in the skin tones and added some green dryads as well though. It would be cool to have all kinds of different shades of green and brown. The Sheravet scene from the books was completely changed and ruined. One of the heaviest moments in the books is when the always jolly Arpen is completely demoralized and depressed because he sees all the dead Skoyatel and his dwarf friends who died fighting them and he looks at all the humans standing around and says What have you done to us? What have you made of us? This is of course left out because the show lacks any nuance and we can't have the struggle of non-humans portrayed well. But let's move on. The scene where Geralt is searching for Jens in the castle was so bad. The three floating heads were more funny than anything else and the weird limp monster reminded me of the scene from that bad Silent Hill 2 movie. It's so not the Witcher and it's clearly there just to gross you out. Vilgefortz definitely didn't make weird limp monsters out of the girls he captured in the books. What purpose would that serve him? What he does to the girls in the books is way more sinister in my opinion, like Dr. Mengele kind of sinister. The scene where Fabio shows Gors Valen to Siri was also shit. There should be a part where they are standing on the city ramparts and Fabio is showing Siri Tanet Island and Torlara which are pretty close to Gors Valen. But Netflix is so cheap they couldn't even do that and Torlara is instead just on some paintings which are displayed in the streets. The scene with a wyvern which follows is probably what triggered me the most this season. They've put Mistel there for some reason. What the fuck is Mistla doing in Gors Velen when Reds are supposed to be in Gesso, which is a Nilfgaardian province far away in the south? How does she get back to the Reds so quickly to be there at the end of the season? Similar distance takes Geralt months when he's looking for Ciri after he leaves Brokilon. It's exactly the same thing as with the second season where Ciri got from Sintra to Kermorhen overnight. When the writers want characters somewhere, they'll just put them there and don't care if it's impossible because of geography. And things like this make this huge fantasy world feel so small. The young knight who is in this scene is also supposed to be accompanied by an annoying girl who is enamored by him, but I guess that Netflix didn't want to show women as bimbos. They made the young knight an idiot instead, and to be fair he seems a bit dense in the books as well, but not to this cartoonish extent. There should also be an older lady with a small dog which is eventually eaten by the wyvern. The whole fight with the wyvern is so bad. In the books it's actually a cool scene because Ciri takes the sword from the young knight and does moves she learned at Kaer Morhen. In the show the wyvern just jumps at Ciri and she stabs it with a small knife. How lame is that? 
the scene with sorceresses in the Silver Heron Tavern that follows left out Black Ryla. If Netflix ever wanted to introduce a badass woman who fights alongside men soldiers and is actually in command, this was their chance and they blew it. And yes, she's not very important for the story, but there is one more really cool scene with her in the books where she defends civilians with her soldiers against Skoyatel, even though they know that Skoyatel will either kill them or torture them if they'll get them alive. Even though Ryla is a really minor character, she is memorable enough that CD Projekt have put her in the first Witcher game and Thronebreaker. So yeah, I think this was a missed opportunity. Anyway, in the show Siri just runs away from the tavern and I guess she's just hoping that she miraculously finds Geralt by accident, which is what actually conveniently happens. In the books she overhears in the bank that Geralt is at Hirundum farm, which is near Gor's Velen, because Geralt is supposed to meet up with Yennefer and Siri, and she even asks Fabio where Hirundum is when they are on the ramparts, so she knows where to go. They also left out the letter she left for Yennefer, which is a really cool moment. They've made up so many dear friend letters at the beginning, but couldn't include this one which actually has a purpose and shows that Siri isn't a child anymore and she's starting to have some agency and initiative. What's also funny is that in the show Yennefer seems to completely forget that Siri exists for almost a whole episode and she's not worried at all what might have happened to her. It's not like there could be wild hunt chasing her or anything. In the books she immediately teleports to Hirundum and drives off the wild hunt specters. Sorry to disappoint but it's definitely not Geralt using art. Siri also must have run away really far from Gors Velen, because instead of turning back immediately and riding back on horses the same way she came, Geralt decides to take a ferry boat. And I know that this scene is from the books, but the context is completely different, it doesn't make any sense geographically, and the whole scene is changed because there is also Siri and Yaskier. It's so bad in the show compared to the books. First of all, why the fuck is Valdemarx here? Netflix leaves out cool characters from the books like Black Ryla completely, yet they are obsessed with this character that's mentioned only in one sentence in the books if I remember correctly. He is there only to make Yaskier the butt of the joke yet again and he's so annoying. The scene where he and his limb band enter the ferry singing in sync is so cringe. The guys from Flaccid Phoenix YouTube channel had a great remark that it's like something from Glee, which I know only because of the references in community. Since the toss a coin to your witcher became so viral, Netflix has been trying so hard to make another one of their songs a thing again and they cram songs in every one of their witcher projects. There has been one at the beginning of the Nightmare of the Wolf, in Blood Origin they were trying so hard to make the Black Rose song a thing and every season of The Witcher had many songs as well. Please stop it Netflix. Get some help. The scene where Siri is hunting the monster was just funny to me. She says that judging by the size and frequency of the ripples she suspects it's an Eshna. Really Siri? You can tell that just from the ripples on the water. That's some Batman level detective skills. But let's move on to the second part of this shit show, and I need to get through this quickly or I'll never finish it in time, so let's just do a short version and perhaps I can elaborate on it in future videos. I wanted to point out that Emher is a joke in the show. In the books he's really intimidating and people are often afraid to just speak to him because one wrong word in front of him might get them executed immediately, but in the show he has this buddy buddy chat with Kyher in the bed and it looks like no big deal. Moving on, Loxia isn't just two small houses in the forest, it's supposed to be part of Tanet where the young students are accommodated. The whole design of Tanet is just wrong. It's supposed to look like just slightly more fantastical Mont Saint Michel and I've been saying since the first season came out that the way they've designed it in the show will bite them in the ass later on when they'll have to adapt the Tanet Coop. And if you've noticed they had to change at least the surrounding area so there are now suddenly plains and a beach. By the way, singing all is not what it seems throughout the ball is really subtle Netflix. The whole Tanet Coop is so cringe and I laughed out loud when I saw Tisaya summon Alzur's thunder. <laughs> Oh, 
the whole desert part would be actually good because it's probably closest to the books we ever got. But when you've rushed through the rest of the source material with a light speed pace up until this point and then you suddenly stop for a whole episode and decide that now is the time to slow down and follow the source material, it feels weird. And the added drawn out hallucinations which are not in the books doesn't help either. I'm not surprised that people are saying it's the most boring part of the season. What I find disappointing is that they've ruined the sand monster Siri is supposed to fight with the little horse. They've made it into two different monsters and both of them are wrong. When I read the books for the first time I didn't know this, but my friend showed me antlions a few years later at a summer camp. There are larvae dig pits in sand to trap passing ants or other prey. I recommend checking them out, because the way they hunt is exactly the same as how it's described in the Witcher books with this monster. Sapkowski just made them huge. When my friend showed me the actual insect that was the inspiration for them, I immediately remembered this scene from the books. And since then I had much bigger appreciation for it, because it was related to something pretty cool from our world. And Netflix fucked it up, of course. There's no Yaskier singing to Dryads. God forbid that we have a scene from the books that actually makes the character that Netflix is constantly making fun of look brave and heroic. Yennefer starts the lodge and heals Geralt. Because why not? Let her do everything in this show and give her all the spotlight that should be on other characters. I love Yennefer in the books, but this is getting really annoying. Geralt walks off with Yaskier and Asian Milva. The end. I hope this show is cancelled as soon as possible and it's actually the end for this dumpster fire. There's so much more I could make fun of and rip to shreds, but I needed to finish this quickly. So goodbye. I'm off to Poland.